Hello humans, today I want to talk about this guy right here, which I picked up from my local KMS. Uh, if you're not entirely sure what KMS is, it's it's a tool store, basically. I was getting some welding supplies and I saw this guy, so I was like, hey, let's see what Milwaukee's doing, because the last thing I picked up from Milwaukee was that really weird automatic. I don't, I think under Canadian law it would technically be considered an automatic, but... Anyway, that was my most recent uh, experience with a Milwaukee knife, so I picked up this one here and another one which I'll get into at a later time. This is the Compact Folding Knife Stay Sharp. I think it's really, really funny um, so FM, rest, that Spanish is the secondary language before French. Um, a lot of the times when things are sold in Canada, it's English and French, but I'm assuming because this is the same packaging they're using down in the States, they're probably just running Spanish uh, first because it is more popular down in the States. Engineered by Milwaukee Tool, professionally made in China. It doesn't matter where it was engineered, quite frankly. Like, if you're putting your name on a product, I would hope that it was engineered, at least in part, by you. Like, I think it's very, very dumb when companies put engineered by Milwaukee or designed in the United States. Like, that's just, no, it means nothing. You have Milwaukee Tool, where they're from. They're bragging about the fact that they have a lanyard hole, which you can see. Otherwise, on the packaging, we have stainless steel. They don't tell us what type of stainless steel, mind you, so I'll have to look into that. But there's a stainless steel. It's a liner lock. It has a durable wire pocket clip. That's all it tells us about that. We have a limited lifetime warranty. Always wear eye protection. Not insulated. Do not use on live currents. Fair. Do not bend blade, cutting tools may shatter or break, use caution when opening package or using knife as blade is sharp, not if you use it enough, uh, ensure blade is locked before each use, yeah, well, that's kind of fair. Alright, let's pop this open. I will say this, for this type of, like, it's not clamshell, but the uh, mixed cardboard plastic packaging, I do like that there's a pull tab on the back that makes it really easy. I wish that the pull tab was better, but having a perforated, perforated pull tab like that is actually kind of nice. Does there no? Oh no, there's no tip protector. It's just a little cutout space. Um, depending on where you live, you might have to separate the cardboard and the plastic. Where I live, I don't, so I'm not going to. But yeah, recycle that. All right, here we have the knife. It is a one position pocket clip. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. This is uh, 17 Canadian dollars. So this does fit into my, oh nice. Uh, this does fit comfortably into what I consider to be ultra budget, which is sub 20 Canadian dollars. We have plastic scales and a very an offset clamshell um, assembly. The last one, I believe, was uh, block construction with a backspacer. This one here, it is a type of clamshell, so fair enough. It's actually pretty clean looking from the front. You only have the machining, you only have the pivot screw visible uh, and the Milwaukee logo, which is pretty fair. It's all pretty tightly made. We have a one position pocket clip, which means it's tip down only, which is kind of old school. Oh, see, that's tricky. This looks like it would be locked out, but it's not quite. Lockout does feel very solid, which is good. Heavy stone washing on the blade. Um, it is very short. Like this is probably only a couple of inches of blade and not a very tall grind either, hollow grind. So we have literally a saber height hollow grind on this guy, which given how thin the blade stock is to begin with, I don't think is that big of a deal, but this is uh, This one here, you can definitely feel the cost cutting. I do wish that the pocket clip was two position, um, mostly just because I'm finding it quite uncomfortable. Like my hand is interacting with it quite a bit more, especially when I'm going to open it. I'm actually, this is not pleasant. Um, yeah, lockup is very solid. Access to the lock bar is fairly good. It is cut a little bit lower on the show side, which does make it just a hair more accessible. Yeah, no, I'm having, I'm gonna pull that off actually right away. What is that gonna be? That's the pivot screw. Ah, uh, okay. 
I don't like it. I, I know some companies do this. I really don't like it when companies use the pivot screw. Um, that's not going to be too 10. I don't like it when companies use the pivot screw as a pocket clip screw. Because I feel like the pocket clip is one of those things that gets moved around so much. Uh, you're liable to... T9 of all things. Hmm. God damn. Okay. Um. Sorry for the silence. I'm just trying to figure out how exactly I'm going to crack this is actually quite tough, but uh, I do not have my eighth inch. Okay, epic. Sorry about that. Normally I have an eighth inch ratchet down here, but I seem to have misplaced it at some point. Where's the blade while I'm doing this? This should not be this hard, by the way. Like there is no world where I should be putting this much, I should have to put this much effort into this. But like, oh, is that it? No, okay. I guess I'm just living with that uh, for the remainder. Super weird that it's a T9. Typically you see like T8 or T10, but T9 is not a size that you see super often. I am going to have to take it off later because it is in my way. Once you get the reverse flick though, it's not difficult to reproduce. So let's test our factory edge. That feels toothy. It feels consistent, but it doesn't feel very, it doesn't feel very sharp. Um, and a lot of that has nothing to do with how, like it's, it's fairly toothy edge. But the main problem is that the angle, I think, on the final bevel is a little bit too high. Yeah, so I mean, it's cutting paper just fine, but it is also lifting it. Oops. Yeah. So we'll cut paper. That's not necessarily the most difficult thing in the world to do, but... Yeah, there's not, it doesn't feel, um, feels like the edge angle is a little bit higher than you'd want, which isn't world ending necessarily. I mean, evidently it will still cut through things, so it's not that bad, but we're going to see if that comes back to bite me in the next set of tests. This is just rubber. Yeah, okay. There. Feel the shouldering a little bit. It's actually not as bad as I expected, but you can definitely notice uh, the shouldering when you're cutting through something a little bit more dense. And for a puncture test, yeah, this blade is so thin. I mean, it just it takes. Let me see. I'm holding this with like two fingers. It takes nothing to poke the blade in. The blade is so thin, and it does come to an exceptionally thin point. So for puncturing into stuff, this is going to work quite well. Got a couple gems back here into the thumb ramp. This actually creates a very natural hold, especially for small knives. Let, let me grab one of the knives that I made. Um, this is one of my knives that I've made and carry. And you can see how like for smaller knives, especially you almost want to hold it at an angle with your hands. You don't want to try to hold it straight because that can be very difficult to do. Whereas if you're holding it at an angle, you get more of a secure grip. And this is absolutely taking advantage of sort of that natural angle that you get. Do I have any small knives around with a very straight grip? Not really. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a particularly noticeable thing on these smaller knives. So it is absolutely to its benefit.
yeah, I'm gonna have to find a way to crack off that. But, other than being uncomfortable, I do think that there's nothing significantly wrong with the wire clip. It does feel like it has good retention. And because of something that Milwaukee does with that little bit of upwards molding there, it is going to stay in your pocket exceptionally well. Like I can already tell the pocket clip's gonna work very well. It's just, I find it very uncomfortable. And so first chance I get, I will be removing it. Yeah, little drop point blade. It's, it's very simple, but what you get, for 50, I think it was $17. Um, but what you get for 17 bucks is what you get for 17 bucks, right? Like there's no question mark in my mind that this is a knife shaped object that will work quite well for as long as you can expect a sub $20 knife to work for. Action's pretty okay. I think most of my problem is just my fingers butting up into stuff and I can't get a comfortable hold on it, which is making it very difficult to flick. It's not gonna close super efficiently and I, it's so rounded off, I don't really think I'm gonna be able to get a thumb flick out of it. Slow rolling, it's okay. Uh, this sort of finger guard section goes out so far that it's actually I've got to work around it a little bit more than you would on some other knives, but that's a fairly minor nitpick. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be having tons of fun carrying this for some time, but I don't think that this is going to be a major... I don't foresee any major issues at this particular time. I could be wrong. We're going to see in a little bit, and you guys are going to see now. And we are back. So I've been playing with this guy, uh, well, I've been playing with it for longer than usual, but a lot of that time was actually waiting uh, for some new bits because this thing stripped out my old T8. Yay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've been playing with this guy here for a little bit on and off, and I did a little bit of looking around, and I actually did find that it is typically fairly easy to find for under $16 or under 20 bucks, normally around that $16 mark. So from here on out, I will be treating this like a proper budget knife. Um, just just to clarify that and clarify, ultra budget knife, I should say. Just to clarify that, clarify where I'm comparing it to and how it is sitting. Um, and that line, like that line is a very, very significant line for me personally, because in that sort of sub $20 mark, this is something that you can justifiably pick up and only expect to need for like one day. Like I forgot my regular knife. I'm halfway to a job site. I just need to pick up something that works. This will do for the day, right? Um, so for me, that's, that's that where I find that hard line to be. So this being under that vastly improves its appeal in my opinion. So first thing first, pocket clip. Uh, where did I stick its old pocket clip? That's a good question. I thought I kept it around. I might have thrown it away. This had a pocket clip, originally. That pocket clip was bad. I got rid of the pocket clip. And that would have been fine, except for some reason getting rid of the pocket clip was actually more of an involved process than I expected. So, obviously, uh, pocket clip was on the back here. And what was holding the pocket clip in place is a pivot screw. No big deal. It is a captive pivot, which is pretty cool. Um, it is held in with Loctite, though, which is how I ended up stripping the little or old T8. So I got some T8s in. But once you take out the pocket clip, it actually won't center. Um, because the two pieces of the pocket clip being underneath this bolt right here helps center and tension and then do something in order to keep the... Oh my god buddy. Sorry, my cat just jumped onto my desk, as you most likely just saw his face. Hi. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, like I was saying, uh, the two pieces of the pocket clip, the two pieces of the wire pocket clip that do fit in there actually end up being essential to the knife being able to be centered and working properly in any effective manner, which means that when I took them out, it immediately went off center. I could not get it to recenter. If I did tighten this down to insanity torque and manage to get it recentered, I could not open it with one hand. Like I, I couldn't even get it with my thumb. I had to use two hands to open it. 
Obviously, that was unacceptable, so I ended up getting some uh, steel rod that I had kicking around, cutting off a couple of little pieces and sticking them under there. So you can't really see them because I did cut them fairly short just so that they would fit and be fairly invisible. But uh, without them, this knife becomes completely dysfunctional without its pocket clip. And the reason why that matters, at least the reason why that matters to me, is because the pocket clip on this is awful. It is super duper uncomfortable. It was really wide right here at the pivot, which made this knife, I found, awkward to manipulate uh, and uncomfortable to hold and to grab. So as far as I'm concerned, the pocket clip needs to come off to make this thing usable. And you can't take the pocket clip off without the knife becoming unusable in a different way. Yay. Anyway, once I got that sorted, and again, right, like, this being a 16 I think the cheapest I saw for is like 14 Canadian, Canadian dollars, which is pretty damn good. Um, so, you know, I, I can't be too hard on it, but, uh, well, I can, I'll get into that a little bit later, but for that, you know, having to modify it a little bit to make it a functional tool, I don't mind all that much. Um, the more broke you are, the more creative and clever you have to be. And that is just kind of a fact of life. So for 20 bucks, having to put in a couple little pieces of steel or little nails or whatever, uh, just in order to get this pivot to work properly, not the end of my world at all. And the ergonomic benefits of taking off that pocket clip make it so worth it. So we don't have up and down blade play, but what we do have is side to side blade play. I don't know how obvious that is. You can feel it a fair amount. Um, the more you tighten down the pivot, the more that kind of goes away. I, I hit the point now where any tighter and it just doesn't get any better. And it's just because there's plastic washers in there. Uh, plastic washers pretty much always have some type of side to side play. The thicker the plastic washers are, the more side to side play you get. And this has relatively speaking thick plastic washers. It's annoying, but not much you can do about it, unfortunately enough. Uh, manipulation is not horrible. I can't get it with a thumb flick. Oh, first time I managed to do that's on camera. Fucking brilliant. Um, apparently I can. Yeah. So typically I can't get it with a thumb flick, but I can get it fairly consistently with a reverse flick or a slow roll open with the thumb, which is absolutely no problem at all. It's a very, very thin blade. It slices pretty efficiently. It does not hold an edge very well at all. Um, the steel is just an unnamed stainless steel. Like I could not find what type of stainless steel this was anywhere at all. So, you know, it's it's some pot steel, maybe a 3CR, maybe it's not even a hardenable steel. I don't know. It held its edge extremely poorly. Um, but better than, like, I don't think it's fair to say that I don't think it's a hardenable steel. It held its edge a little bit worse than... Uh, 420 J2, which is not a good steel, is not a steel I ever want to see above the $20, $20 Canadian dollar price point. I think it's unacceptable, of, uh, unacceptable above 20 Canadian dollars. This performs slightly worse than it, but again, in that price range, I can kind of forgive it. Uh, and it, it did hold an edge, right? Like it wasn't, well, I complained about that Milwaukee fixed blade there. That was absolutely god awful. That thing would not hold an edge. Like, you could not do anything to make it hold an edge. You'd cut in a tree bark and it would dull immediately. This right here, at least I could do some basic wood carving with it. I could cut through cardboard. I could do tasks like that without it falling apart on me. Um, so it is some definition of a blade steel. It's not a brilliant blade steel, but it is some definition of a blade steel. And it worked fine. Um, Sharpening it super easy, hit it with a strop. Honestly, with some diamond uh, compound on there, you could actually get it to be, you could basically sharpen it with diamond compound if you were determined enough. It is quite soft. So, uh, yeah, it, it was fine. It wasn't amazing to carry. Um, I'm going to do some size comparisons and then I'm going to get into the knife that I want to compare this to the most. So real quick, here we have it next to our Civivi Chevalier and our Wee Banter. As you can see, it is smaller than either, making this a small knife, which makes sense because it is called the compact folding knife. Go figure. And 
And here we have our Buck 110 and our Zippo lighter. I gotta get one of the, well, I have one. I have a mini Zippo. I'm gonna get my hands on an extremely, extremely small, uh, I'll bring this out as the Zippo lighter. <laughs> and anyway, jokes aside, uh, yeah, so it is quite a small knife in terms of its thickness. It is relatively thick. It's a little bit thinner uh, than the Buck 110, but not by too, too much. And it is actually thicker than the Zippo, even excluding uh, the pivot screw that's stuck out. It was stuck out with the pocket clip on too. It just doesn't go flush. Uh, it is a little bit thicker than the Zippo. Not by much, but you know, a little bit is a little bit. Okay, so. I'm gonna do blade thickness. Pivot is, like I've mentioned, a T8, which is definitely a good thing. It's a captive pivot, which again, definitely a good thing. Not all, like some of the design elements on this were actually pretty decent. Okay, blade stock thickness. It's gonna be like nothing. Seventy-eight thousandths. Oh my god. Yeah, seventy-eight thousandths. That's incredibly thin. Uh, yeah. So. As long as the edge is still good enough to start a cut, it laser beams through stuff in no small part just because it is so incredibly, incredibly thin. Um, now for the knife that I want to compare it to the most, the Buck 311. So the reason I want to compare these two is because, one, they're similar enough in design, and two, they're both pretty much the same price. Like, this is... Pretty much constantly on sale for around that 15 to 16 dollar mark this right here like i said i find around that uh 15 16 dollar mark a lot both of them msrp is technically higher but this is what i have found you can buy them at so that's what i'm gonna run with in terms of pricing um you get a little bit less blade you don't know what the blade steel is the handle i will say is a very, very different experience between the two. This right here is a little bit shorter, a little bit stubbier, like it's taller top to bottom, which depending on your taste can be a bit more hand filling. I actually, I really like the way the buck fits in my hand, but if you have a slightly smaller hand or a bigger hand than me, uh, this will actually, this will most likely prove to be less and less comfortable, whereas this is a pretty accommodating grip. If you've got bigger hands than me, I think it'd be a little bit uncomfortable, like I'm feeling a little bit cramped, not super cramped, but especially my first two fingers, I am a little bit cramped. Uh, if you have smaller hands than me though, the Milwaukee is quite a comfortable knife. The Buck definitely has better action though. It's very, very easy. And keep in mind, this one here I've been using for three years now, almost four years now. So this one here has been put through the ringer. Um, and the action, I still think, is significantly better on the buck. But with that being said, you can buy the Milwaukee in more places. I've only ever found the buck at... I actually think I've only ever found it at Canadian Tire. Uh, I know technically it's sold in other places, but I have only ever seen it personally at Canadian Tires. So, yeah. Whereas the Milwaukee, you can find it in lots of different hardware stores, stuff like that, which does make it an easier thing to find. All things considered, if you're looking to buy a new everyday carry knife, because it's a one position pocket clip, because I find it to be a very uncomfortable pocket clip, because it's tip down only pocket clip, like this is the pocket clip alone uh, situation, I think makes it impossible for me to recommend as an everyday carry option. Uh, it just makes it so uncomfortable to manipulate the knife. And me personally, I like tip up significantly more than I like a tip down carry. Um, so there is that preference that is going to play a role in it, but quite frankly, just 
just how uncomfortable it is to manipulate the knife with the pocket clip in, in my opinion, is enough to say you should not get this for an everyday carry. Now, if you need a tool, an everyday tool, you forget your knife one day, whatever it happens to be, I think this right here is definitely recommendable. Even if you just need something to throw in a toolbox that like maybe you need once in a blue moon, I think that this is recommendable. It's inexpensive. You don't worry about damaging it. The side-to-side -side blade play, it would be its the biggest point against it in terms of using it in any significant capacity. But quite frankly, for the tasks that this thing is designed for, which is cutting open boxes, maybe scraping a little bit of glue, maybe cutting some line or something like that. Like it's not nothing intense. I don't think that it matters all that much. And I mean, it's there, but it's not significant. Like a lot of knives in its class are going to be doing that. That's the other thing. The uh, Buck 311, no side to side play, no up and down play. This is, I really like this knife. I have a video on it though, so I'm not going to get into it any further than I have. Um, it's fairly comfortable. Again, if you have like big hands, this is going to get a lot less comfortable very, very fast because it does feel a little bit cramped even in my hands but it's fine it's serviceable and i think that at a knife at this price point serviceable is probably what milwaukee is going for um expect to be sharpening it very regularly but other than that it's just kind of fine like that there's there's my recommendation for it it's kind of fine uh yeah stay safe and have fun out there peace